How goes the saying? Innovate or die. But when we look at helper models from today and compare them with their competitors from 20 years ago, well, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference. So what's up with helper and innovation? That's what we will look at right now. The only time Harper innovates their products is when they are forced by competition. Don't believe it? Harper has made two major strides in improving their products. The first big push came at the beginning of the 21st century, when Harper took the step from their old generation models to what became known as new generation models. It was also very much needed, given that all Harper competitors already were selling models with far more realistic landing gears and printed detailing that to this day can compete and often beat Harper's products. The second push came at what I would call the end of the prime age of scale 500, roughly between 2006 and 2014. Halper did very much make improvements with their molds, had some of the most realistic landing gear in the history of Halper, and even though printed detailing still was rather limited, the print quality was absolutely prime. This in combination with great overall product quality very reasonable pricing perhaps ended up being enough to kill off all remaining competition. Helper has made many changes to their models, but these changes have mostly ended up making the models worse. Since the beginning of 2021, Helper finally started adding a few additional printed details, but what was a much needed step forward still can only be measured as the bare minimum and frankly was a long overdue step. But overall Halper's products have rather gone backwards in the overall finish. And when has Halper really come up with a major innovative step forward? Okay. Halper has not been the most innovative company, but has found its place on the market as a mass-producing company that sold its products considerably cheaper than its competition. What's the problem with that? The problem is, of course, that since there aren't any competitors left, there is no reason for Harper to develop their products in any way, which we very clearly can see. As Harper never could compete with detailing, they competed with price. But now collectors have no other options, and Harper knows it as prices go up and up and up. But with constantly rising prices that do not reflect the value of the product. Halper, however, is killing off the only argument there has ever been for buying Halper products. Value for money. So it is not surprising that the response from collectors is clear. Either they stop collecting altogether, or they take the step and change to collecting scale 400 as they feel alienated by Halper. The price gap to scale 400 is melting away like the ice caps on the poles, and frankly what collectors are offered in scale 400 is far beyond what Harper delivers. But hold on, I can already hear the voices shout, you cannot compare scale 400 with scale 500. That's not fair. And you know what? I've been saying the same thing for years, but the truth is you actually can. Don't believe me? Look at what JC Wings does. These models are scale 500 and can very much compete with scale 400 models. Yes, okay, I'm of course not ignorant about the fact that of course it is more difficult to achieve the same level of detailing in scale 500 as the models are smaller, which makes it more difficult to pull off the same level of detailing. But that's actually not the point I want to make. What I want to say is that there is no reason to hide behind the scale of the model when it comes to the amount of detailing that could and should be added to a model nowadays. My big concern right now is that Halper has barely any motivation to start working towards the next big and very necessary innovation push for scale 500 models. When we look at the scale 400 market, we see great strides that are being made. The flaps down models JC Wing started with in scale 200 are now also being worked on for their scale 400 product line. NG models have started a loyalty program similar to what we know from real life airlines and we see new molds being developed left, right and center. All that is happening because the innovation isn't being pushed by a single entity but by many companies that constantly are pushing each other forward in the race for the customers. 
It is not Halper's fault that they currently don't have any competitors, but with the lack of innovation, they are either laying the grounds for the death of Scale 500 or sowing the seeds for new and potent competitors to completely take over the Scale 500 market. Personally, I hope for two to three competitors and Halper back in its prime, when they are forced to innovate to stay relevant. And I want Halper to stay relevant. This is the fourth chapter in a series of videos where we want to go a bit deeper into the issues the Scale 500 community is facing and where and how we expect Helper to improve. So do stay tuned for the upcoming chapters.